Okay, now we're live. Yeah. So don't yeah. don't move. Don't don't touch anything else, Tweeter. Okay. <laughs> you should be. <laughs> it touching buttons you shouldn't touch. So Christian, you let me know. No buttons can't touch anything. You let me know when uh, when you want me to start talking. Go ahead. We're good to go. We are. Yeah. You don't 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 touch anything else. Just go ahead. Okay. So um. Uh, cool. So if, if you guys are just joining us, I apologize for the delay. Um, obviously we, this is our first time, uh, as a disclaimer, it's, our um, our first episode and this is a community conversation. So, um, I don't know if we, I, I'm not a very tech savvy guy. I think Christian, uh, is, uh, is running the, the technical side of this with the audio visual. So please feel free to Put your comments on there um, for suggestions if you're not able to hear us or see us clearly or um, but if you are jo just joining us uh, thank you for joining us this is um, a conversation that's probably about a good three or four weeks too late but uh, better late than never um, this is a conversation I think that a lot of us have been um, itching to have uh, it's a conversation that's happening I think in some circles in our community um, so before we do that um, we're going to be here for the next hour um, having a conversation about COVID-19 and its impact in among American communities, not just um, here in Minnesota, where all of the guests uh, tonight are from, but also um, in California and Wisconsin. So uh, but we, um, let's go ahead and introduce our guests and I'll have the guests introduce themselves. Instead of having you know a few people just talking um, about random stuff, I wanna make sure that we get some experts um, who are out in the front lines who are from the health, uh, who are healthcare professionals, um, who will come from the policy um, uh, background and also are paying uh, um, attention to, there's so much mis misinformation out there as well too. So I'll go ahead and introduce some of our distinguished guests. And I also, first off, uh, for those who don't know, I'm Tujer, the comedian, uh, an activist based in Minnesota. And my co-host today is Christian Yang, who came up with this idea about having this podcast so we can have some, uh, some live conversations. So. Um, go ahead and uh, I'll, I'll introduce our healthcare professionals, Dr. David, Dr. Moore, if you can share a little bit about um, Hmong Medical Association. Hi, everybody. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. David Tao. I'm a plastic surgeon in uh, Woodbury, Minnesota, and uh, I'm part of the uh, Hmong Medical Association. I want to welcome all of you uh, for joining us tonight. Thank you, uh, Tunjur. Thank you, Christian, for uh, setting uh, this up <laughs> for us to talk about this very important uh, uh, impact on our community. So we, uh, I look forward to uh, uh, talking with you uh, tonight. All right. Uh, good. Good evening. Uh, I'm Dr. Mualo. I'm also a member of the Hmong Medical Association. I'm a family medicine doctor, and uh, I practice primary care in St. Paul, Minnesota. And so. Um, I'm here tonight, uh, hopefully to, um, you know, just gonna go over some of the um, uh, tried and true recommendations um, that uh, healthcare providers uh, have uh, used um, for many years to, uh, to fight off infections. So I'm, I lo I'm looking forward to uh, this discussion. Yeah. And then our uh, final guest is Bo Tao. She has been working with the AAPI community across the, the country. Um, and she is also the director of Cal Coalition for Asian American Leaders. And Bo, if you could talk a little bit about the work that Cal does. And then also, um, I know that you have eyes and ears on a national perspective, right? And tonight, one of the topics is gonna be, you know, along with this virus, our community, along with a lot of Asian American communities are facing this huge backlash of anti-Asian racism and harassment um, across the country. And so uh, if you could share a little bit about Cal and your role. Sure. Hi, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, I don't know. I assume that most people will speak Hmong since we're talking to the Hmong community. Uh, Coalition of Asian American Leaders. 
uh, it's an organization that is based here in Minnesota, but we have the privilege of working with organizations across the country. So, uh, um, you know, the Asian Americans, so community policy Lobato, Lama Bissing, Tolin Totu, Tiajitalin, the Chuahatu, and Chuahatu, Chita, or a Neha Pot, a Neha, Teka Betali Pot. So uh, that is my work, and uh, I'm really grateful to be here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to start off, you know, to say that again, I'm not an a, a expert in the health um, profession, but I know that there's Hopito community, there's a lot of information out there. In fact, you know, I mean, there's Hmong people doing YouTube videos with how get you on a you to call the Corona when this is such a novel virus that even like experts around the world don't even have a vaccine for, right? And then you have, um, you know, also traditional remedies where uh, that are culturally in our community traditionally it's been seen as something positive. or name call, I name or name call you, But in this time and age, when um, the governor is issuing a a minimum of 10 people gathering or six feet distance where we're doing physical and social distance. Um, I saw a video recently of this monk family. He's, he's touching everyone on the forehead. And so what traditionally our, our norms of healing and, and uh, dealing with some of these, um, some of these, these, these issues um, goes directly against what what the laws, what the, the our, our leaders, our state leaders are, are uh, recommending. So, um, some some. So I want to kind of ask, like maybe um, Dr. Lowe and Dr. David, if you guys can talk a little bit about, um, you know, being in the healthcare profession. What are some what is some very information and vital information that sure. they not have access to because um, we can't drive out and not everyone can get a doctor's appointment right away too. Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing, well, the first thing I want to tell everybody who's okay out there, I want us to take this seriously. This is a time that they So I want to know one of the main purpose of today is that Gusa said your fact, your fiction. So the, the, one of the purpose of today is I want to, like the more, uh, our, our goal is to educate. So we say educate a bit of law, the Hmong community, coronavirus is something real, it's something serious. They take it seriously. It will hit YouTube video how it's going to affect us. It somebody is going to be affected. It's going to affect all of us. And so the uh, most important message is that they should contain they contain to to come on up and it's a total it the fact is it's going to hit everybody but what can we do to stop to slow it down we can't stop it but what can we do to slow it down and you know the things that we need to slow it down what if what if uh, Governor uh, Waltz, I knew executive order could stay at home because based social distance. It's a very, uh, very dangerous disease. And so, you know, why is it so dangerous? Dr. Mokamwachi, add, I'd say, yeah, um, 
what can we do to to social distance? Does it really work in our community? Well, um, you know, basically, in no, you know, uh, basically, not you here, here, basically, what I just okay, come on, like in here, basically, yeah, been hot, so like this, you said that they look like here, ah, they just do basically, basically, should you drink hot, to cheer, so they, they just you drink, drink, then, this, ah, basically, come on, they, ah, just look here, just should be Thai, be to King. Thế thì thay luôn lửa tụi nền là do cho nền hỗ trợ này chị. Nhưng giờ tới giờ nó bị xin đề lò lại thế, ở chỗ cứ không mỏi xin đề lò lại thầu cho để mua để tụi cái mỏ nè. Bị dư tiền kia là bây giờ thì dùng một hồ lửa dùng một hồ lửa khói tụi nền mới tụi cái mỏ. Dù như ở chỗ anh đi thay ý rằng có lý tài chính rồi, thì thì tụi cái mỏ và và tụi mỏ có về cầu chưa nào mà nhiều khi tự chế chế sử dụng bể và bên nông nghiệp lúc chế chỉ tăng chi đoàn à, để và chỉ mua chuột kho tàu lô để kỳ lọc kỳ xe xài thia, à nông sản là xe chế trong thia, để chỉ bây giờ à dân hay thia cho lũ lợn kia có nó bé rồi thì bé chỉ cho giá xe xí đi, bé chỉ cho có khăn dầu khăn dầu khăn mua, bé à tới giờ bé tính nó ta là lợn kia đi nó mà giờ ít giờ để tí giờ giờ cho kê giờ tí thái có ตัวกามอนนี่ชิชอกี้จะจ้องเรื่องจ้องตัวเอ้ก็ไปเทลีป้าจ่ายตัวเออชดเดอร์จ่อว่าไปจ่ายตัวนะเจ้ากูทราบก็ชดเดอร์วันเออเจ้าให้เตี้ยจ้าลูน้องมาชี้หลาต้องหลาไฮเอ้ก็อะไรนะมั่วลูไฮซึ่งแต่สิยังยังอีจ้าเกี่ยวตีไทยจ้ากามอนตรงนี้อ่ะตัวกามอนเออวัดหนึ่งมอโควิดเออกดยัวนั่นแหละ Ted บุษนจีก็ the reason why เป็นชายลูนะ is because เออ to to mana ne ne ki shaheng and then eventually na and eventually they better better more the kung zao better 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 more doctor zao better more the nurse zao better more the healthcare ah frontline zao better more chuo zao better more hong mo zao na and then thong da na je better to je ti xia de ling tu te yo dao jo ah ah te lu te yo dao bu lu hong mo na te yo dao bu lu ic yu na je tan da je mo zao and so that's now better to the New York, California, Washington, Petrobras, Italy, lot of children are not just learning to move home only. Ne, I guess she to show more more show that to jump to look home more. I'm more picture part room bed. No, to go to jump. The Italy, lot of young, lot to move home more. So, the the go to to look machine, the park, the toys, the mega, that's that that to you. So, so, how many the Petrobras, ah, not long day to Petrobras, mass to Petrobras, short to the. That's the reason why Petrobras should do so. Uh, pay machine job, if I pana, they we bought the new job with the mom. Eventually, you told us we had to pay look culture, not pay look culture. You high name, but she look up here, but she she look what I chill a patient job. If I per we pay more good dinning charge, young to pay what I chill a ship or what I chill a day loon thing who play kid day mature than the day a patient of the young diploma knowledge of the young day. Lucia and Lucia, you see, Kina and the pay high had they got take it easy to have eventually pay you more the doctor, they don't only pay you a lot. ปาตัวนี้ทุเรียนจะตัวเดียวเป็นคอนโทรลเลยนะเนี่ยยี่ห้อมาแต่ใช่ไหมอันนี้เราควรควรควรควรควรควรควรควรควรควรควรควรควร
Is it a regular cough, regular flu, or fever? Okay. Um, you know, new chimu opportunity. Um, for example, good brother, no more. He has a fever that she knew whom okay, let you more testing, like the got you to candidate. What can he do to um to take care of it to address the just symptoms and I got new talk get worse? You can monitor the new father, no king, while new thought of her testing. Well, to the name of that, she now yeah, they got some side, they come on, but yeah, they got power there. Uh, they don't come on. How don't try to just assume. Oh yeah, side the gamola na suma, okay? The hard the you know, up and tea one day num like the kaya ju ya itu tero mu short day la la ya ten yung short day la kaya to ju munta yang wa kaya to ju to nyo uh ja into itu n mo to monola ma tili tejo ka tili more the she ta shina bait pa de to come on on ki how ja jala in a kachi to mu hot Assume that you have it. Muntiake Nia Nichi Chitalin ก็ก็ได้อ่ะจีก็สงสัยเดี๋ยวจะมาตุกันมองเลยเนาะก็ยังจวดเตะอ่าจีตาลินเดอร์ญาฮอเจ๋ชอโอชีชีอ่าคง
and then sometimes the symptoms very mild and sometimes very severe. So it takes about the whole incubation time. It takes about two days to 12 days to show up. So you, you never know. So you have to assume you have it and then you have to accordingly treat yourself and then protect others so that they don't get infected. So mm. don't be ashamed that you have the symptom. Don't be ashamed. It's hard to It doesn't matter. We all, there's somebody's going to have COVID, okay? So don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed if you have COVID. Because it's life or death, okay? And so that's how they come up with it. Like you must go to the hospital, like you must go to the hospital, you must go to the hospital. Don't care about that. Care about your life. Care about your family. So do not be ashamed of your symptom. Do not be ashamed to get tested. Okay, it is for your own good. And so go ahead, have that. You have to treat it, treat it like you 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 have it, and you have to protect. Everybody, and so not everybody will have the symptom. Underlying medical problem, immune compromise, energy, strong, even just I'm not going to get sick. That's not the point. The point is, you might get a little sick, but you can infect your grandpa, you can infect your grandma, you can infect your mom and your dad, and those are the people that will die, those are the people that will get sick. So, we have to kind of be very, very careful. Speaking of like your now, the Dr. David, Dr. Uh, Low, you know, Bay Mong, we have about five or six Hmong day, senior daycare centers, right? In the mm. Twin Cities, right? All of those have been shut down. Right. So, okay, we don't usually send our, our parents to just, just in your home. Mm. A lot of we live in multi generational households with your grandkids, the grandpa, the ball of yellow. So, any comments, any recommendations you may have where um, is it, is it, does it make sense to put them in their own room, to isolate them, to give them, because um, in, in my family, I, I was overseas in January, I have not seen my mom for over a month, um, just because I want to give her the extra, protect, extra protection, like you said, you have to act as if you, you have it, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes because because social distance, they try to not visit, right? So oh, who found in us that she might use you stop Sometimes you put them at risk. And so it's a day there's many, there's many um ways that we can visit Bejalona, phones, Facebook, uh, FaceTime, and so for now, let's try that because it doesn't help anything and you can actually infect so uh, they're gonna have a lot of mental um, anxiety as well biala to tell the like the go tao je go to tu mani ji 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 go je mo ko sao to ko lu je nu nu na so you can't do that too okay you just have to take the precaution like to no more and nutrition the ko like to to um do the everything as usual but you should take extra precautions what they uh clean like lu hong nan ba le de ko ta shi na this is the time where they need you the most yeah Rappers. 
เอ่อจอลอมาญาฮอเจตาวนะเจยอยู่ญาฮอเจกุไซตาชินอเสเลลอญาเจเลเทเจมิญอญาเจตาเทจอลอจิชัวคอเชียลเทอ่าคนนี
vegetable poaching thì tôi lấy mới là study hay là sometimes giờ như cú thao thấy nhiều nhiều mỏ thao thấy nhiều nhiều chi sinh nhau tập chế nên thì nó Tylenol, so nó Motrin, so nó ibuprofen, cho nên sometimes anh cho cho nên nó may make your immune system a little lower and put you a little higher risk for the in more serious Uh, of uh, uh, you know infection and so try to take Tylenol okay the why the the mong the low the j it's all not not motrin ibuprofen avio you could actually try to not Tylenol the bando the day and the day yeah it's a kid and they are there to buy it's all about not the actual yeah so for those of you who are just joining us um if you are millennials where you're tech savvy a your name with your boy your grandma grandpa your loan and any teacher boy Now is a great time to go grab them. Uh, if they're in your household, if it's safe, come and, and listen to experts like Dr. Moore and Dr. David Tao with the Hmong Medical Association. Uh, we're going to try to bring you separate fact and fiction because that's not even in mainstream media. Um, politicians are saying one thing and healthcare professionals and scientists are saying another thing. So mm -hmm. I think as a community, I think we owe it to ourselves to look out for each other and really um, separate fact from fiction. So. Uh, if you're just joining us, uh, since we started a little late, we are going to go um, another 15, 20 minutes um, because we did promise a solid hour. And it's, you know, it's not like you guys had any place to go anyway. So um, we thank you for joining us. And you're going to hear from Bo uh, in a little bit. Um, I also want to make a disclaimer that, Yane, um, if you missed the earlier part of this program, this entire uh, podcast or video cast will be recorded and we're going to put it on um, maybe one of the community pages. Also, you can check out the pages of Cal Coalition for Asian American Leadership. Uh, they, it's on their page. It's also on the Hmong Medical, Associ Hmong Medical Association page. It's on, on the Hmong American Partnership 411 page. Um, I'd like to shift gears a little bit. By the way, this is the first of many series. Now, uh, I think we, our second episode will be this Friday. And we are going to talk about other things like, well, how does this impact your Hmong, um, you know, Wisconsin? In California, so we're going to have speakers come talk about that. But that Dr. David talked a little bit about, you know, our, our elders staying at home, and um, a lot of them are, are dealing with mental illness issues, right? Because there may be depression, anxiety. Because so we'll have a, another expert, um, Dr. Tali, will come in and talk about how do we uh, help our elders, our families, and even ourselves as working professionals. How do we address mental illness and stay positive um, mentally and physically in this quarant during this quarantine, during this difficult challenge? So uh, mm -hmm. stay tuned for that. That'll be Friday, same time as well, too. Now, if I can shift gears a little bit, but we have some time, and I thank you for joining us. You've done a lot of work across the country on, um, you know, anti um, on dismantling racism here at a policy level, educating our, our legislators in D.C., about the state of Asian American affairs. Yeah. Um, just this, I mean, I live in the suburbs and just this afternoon, I saw a, a sign, someone posted on their website saying, this is, this is Woodbury, uh, Minnesota. And there was a very racist note stuck to her door when she and her husband came home from work from this Hmong family. Mm. And I just got off the, uh, the um, messenger with her. She said, she, when she reported to the police, The police said there's been several incidents like that in the last few weeks. And so this is just one little suburb, but this is a phenomenon that's happening across the country, right? Uh, President Trump calling this the Chinese virus. Um, we've heard attacks all over on CNN, on um, ABC News saying Asian families being attacked. There, some of them are um, being spat at, harassed. If you could talk a little bit about what can our families do to, um, if something like this happens, how can they report it? What's happening out there in Asian America? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks, Tudor, for bringing up a really important topic. Uh, uh, of course, everybody uh, understands that um, you know uh, we no longer use uh, terminologies that uh, stigmatize people, right? <laughs> and that is why uh, doctors and uh, professionals named it the COVID-19 and or coronavirus. Um, And I think that it's important for all of us to also know that, right? Mm -hmm. 
you know, uh, when our leaders use terminology and it creates uh, for whole whole communities. And so um, if a person is racist, they're not going to distinguish whether you're Hmong or Chinese or, you know, any other ethnicity. And I think that this is, um, this is a great concern because um, people are worried about their own safety. They can't just either go to work or go buy groceries or, you know, be out in their neighborhoods. And so like you, I've also been hearing about incidences that are happening to people. And I think that they're concerned about their own safety, but also feel like, um, you know, not only do they have to just um, worry about how to be safe right now in this pandemic, they're having to worry about um, just physically what they look like and that they might be harassed or uh, physically hurt. Um, and I think that that is uh, a great so leaders across the country are working on it. One, we need our uh, you know, state and local and federal leaders to not use terminology that uh, uh, st uh, stigmatizes whole communities, right? Because this, dis uh, this disease does not discriminate. And if we do that, and somebody who is not uh, Asian uh, has it, you know, uh, what does that mean, right? So I think um, for people that I'm glad that your neighbor called the police because it's important that we also report incidences because otherwise uh, it's treated like, oh, I'm sorry that happened to you, right? But we don't have um, good tracking mechanisms. And so uh, there are different sites right now that are tracking and we are also in the process of developing and working with uh, both the uh, attorney general's office as well as the Minnesota Department of Human Rights to better uh, they're better or to figure out reporting mechanisms would help people to feel safe that they can report what is happening to them because not everything that happens unfortunately is not prosecutable if you know what I mean because the standard of the law is quite um, is very specific to protect a class or discrimination on housing employment uh, credit those kinds of things and so that makes it difficult um, I want to just reiterate with both the uh, Dr. Lowe and Dr. Thaw said which is that um, People just have to take this very seriously. And, um, you know, it's very rare that we have uh, uh, our elected leaders at, you know, local and national levels declaring peacetime emergencies. So that means that. Uh, so these things are not taken lightly. Uh, and we understand impact to people's um, income, they understand the impact to people's uh, uh, ability to, um, you know, go to school, all of those things. And so um, I, I, I also just want to say that um, those things are things that really matter. Um, what is it that you need um, to feel like you are uh, safe and protected because that's the best thing that you can do for yourself. If we get through this period and nothing happens to you, that is the best case scenario, right? Um, and so, but also knowing that it is not always so easy to think like that because people have real uh, needs, right? They might have to pay rent or pay mortgage. And this is where we have to uh, uh, be able to communicate directly to to our elected officials to say, we are concerned about these things, right? If I have a small business and I don't open it, how will I make a living? And so how do our Hmong and businesses are also included um, in those packages that are providing relief to communities. So I kind of digressed a little bit, but I wanna just say if incidences happen to you um, and you, it, it matters that we report it together uh, so that we have an idea um, and we are able to collectively say this is not just something uh, that unfortunately happened to Tujer, for example, but that there are, uh, it is uh, rampant and uh, when, when we condone it as uh, national leaders, in this case our president, it makes it okay for those who, um, who feel angry about what is happening and we can all understand that when people feel angry that something out of their control is happening to their families or loved ones or something might happen to them they have they feel angry and then they're taking it out on those of us who look uh, mm -hmm. 
Why is it both? Why is time it who are been? If you could talk a little bit about oh, even though... sorry to jar I I'm okay sorry yeah I got cut off there um if you could talk a little bit about why it's important uh, for us to report it because maybe it could just be incident of, um, harassment right that she okay. maybe you can't do press criminal charges but you have to pay report now there's a database that collects that why it's important to still make that report yes and you know we are talking to all the agencies about it because it's not just a matter of being able to prosecute it's a matter of us being able to validate that something actually happened to you and that it's believed right um, but the other thing is that collectively then we are able to see that this is actually a real concern for um, cities and neighborhoods and things like that and that way we can also do something about it right we can tell and your staff well enough they don't understand they should not discriminate and if they choose to tell someone uh, that I don't want to ring you up simply because you are Asian uh, that that is discriminatory right mm -hmm. um, so I think that we want to be able to see all of the experiences together so that we we can have and provide some directives to leaders who also can do something about it and as a community our collective voice matters, right? So taking matters into your own hand uh, is important. And I have been hearing folks say, you know, people are saying they want to buy more ammunition, they want to, you know, uh, protect themselves. And to me, that is the greatest fear, right? Because uh, we don't want that to be the way that you take care of things. Um, and uh, it is our collective responsibility to take care of each other right now because uh, it doesn't feel safe to take care of that and their families. Um, that means that, uh, as Dr. Lowe and Dr. Thaw said, you know, um, they may not seek help when they need it, right? Or um, they may not um, be able to uh, just feel safe. And when people's personal safety is compromised, it means that all of us are less safe. So I just wanna urge people to say, you know, report, but also um, uh, pay attention so that we can collectively as a community say, this is not just anecdotal. It's not just happening to a few people. It's a collective experience, right? And we need leaders to step up and we need people to understand that uh, discrimination and racism of any kind to any community is not okay. And you know, you might have somebody who chooses only to say bad words, right, or to be uh, racist verbally, so verbal abuse. But you might have another person uh, okay about the island. And we have seen throughout history, and then we have even seen, like a Japanese American internment, that you know, you get to a whole point, and a whole community could be treated a certain way, and so. Uh, that is not where we're headed. I think as a state, we don't want to be there. Um, and so, um, you know, I'm glad to hear some uh, leadership from the governor and the, you know, commissioner of Department of Human Rights and the attorney general. But uh, a as a community, we must also uh, share our experiences, right? Um, I have to tell you that sometimes people are willing to tell me about it, but they're not willing to, for example, talk to reporters mm -hmm. or they're not willing to share their experience. And um, the biggest platform to make sure that other Minnesotans know that this is happening is also to share, um, you know, through whether it's the, the media or to report. It. That is how we can also create more safety, right? So that people know this isn't just happening in, you know, certain neighborhoods, it might be happening in Woodbury, which is a very, you know, um, uh, I would say, you know, a, a neighborhood or a suburb that people think of as, you know, pretty well off, right? <laughs> so um, if I can interrupt for a second, I want to just add to what you're saying, maybe summarize a few quick talking points in Mona. We have yeah. Yeah, yeah, that you feel like you face harassment or discrimination. Uh, you can't press criminal charges. That she at least more record idea. Oh, no happen. Oh, no jaw. Touch on the okay. Let more record idea because all this information is collected. Um, you know, eventually, and then the, it, it also helps us when we are able to um make you know change policy at a later time when we're you know at, yeah. at the state and, level. Uh, Tujar, I want to. 
productively are welcome to call us as well, just so we can help to track those incidents. Yeah, the link to her, so I did a lot of Sahoo, the other day, you know, Ning Ye, you said, you know, Sadia, oh, Linda, uh, Ja, Ibliha, Duchi, you know, who police lodge, you know, who Mudota Department of Human Rights, but uh, those still are important incidences to know about. Um, and then, of course, you had the Nyota Jek and the Nyota Gato Holy Day, those are actually uh, against a protected class and for very uh, uh, reasons that prevent you from, you know, getting uh, um, uh, housing or those types of things that uh, are actually prosecutable. So I want people to know that it matters who who uh, who said it to you, right? <laughs> yeah, they're like, it's a good thing to do. You know, you know, dog. And they open the window and say, you know, said, uh, take your virus and go back to your country, right? And so, you know, that that is considered free speech in this country and not a hate crime. But the reason why it's important for her to tell me is because we can uh, say, it, you know, people are in their neighborhoods doing things that, you know, every uh, citizen or, or resident should be able to do freely. But to now feel like she might not be safe in her neighborhood is a dangerous thing, right? Um, but then also, um, if your employer says that to you, then that is uh, discrimination, right? <laughs> so that's why knowing um, is very important. And you know, you have the should have um, uh, she, uh, uh, you know, nona. So, maybe fix the laws um, in jurisdictions that can help um, to pros um, to also name these as hate crimes instead of uh, you know mm -hmm. I, I, wanted, wanted, I, I, wanted, I wanted to add to uh, what now what Bo is saying that uh, in terms of your olijana when you face something like that mm -hmm. um, Two weeks ago, the auntie that I was on a teleconference with Senator Fong Her and uh, Minnesota AG, as well as um, St. Paul Mayor Carter, and this question came up from some of the uh, cultural and spiritual leaders in the Hmong community, and uh, the response from the Minnesota AG is that for those of you who live in Minnesota, um, particularly Hmong, um, there is a uh, liaison at the AG's office uh, who is Hmong that you can contact. Uh, and so mm -hmm. I posted that uh, liaison's uh, contact information on my Facebook uh, status so people can use that. Uh, so that was the recommendation from the um, Minnesota Attorney General's. Okay, I appreciate that. And I'm going to add one more number to that too. The in a lot of states and towns, they have like a department, a local department of human rights. Um, but don't bring in it. You know, if you feel you're you're in, in immediate physical danger, not nah, call the cops, call nine one one. Yes. But if you're not in physical danger, you still want to report it. Go who uh, Minnesota Department of uh, Human Rights. The number is one 657 3704 I will put this information in the comments later. Here you can also email them uh, a Thor report at info.mdhr, which is, stands for Minnesota uh, Department of Human Rights, .state.mn.us. And then um, with regard to, 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 the, to- Can I just also say again that, yeah, they are linked to her, uh, uh, cause I, I have heard a couple of people say that like, who do the line, uh, the messages is full. And mm -hmm. so like, they couldn't get through. Mm -hmm. So I also want to encourage that, yeah, they are linked to her, sa uh, hai office okay and the number is uh, 651-756-7210 um, and uh, 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 you can also call us so that we can follow up with you to um, also uh, do an intake and hear from you about 
Is that the cow office, Bo? Is that the cow yes, office? Yes, that, that's the cow office number. Mm -hmm. And there's yes. another hotline, um, mm -hmm. another phone number I'm, I think it's important for our, our listeners to, to get is, this is the Minnesota COVID, the specifically Minnesota COVID hotline, huh? 800-657-3903. Once again, Iyi Sun Sun Tao Chi Hia Pei Kyo Sun Pei 657 3903. It's an 800 number. And when you call any questions you have about COVID uh, 19, they, you can also ask for a Hmong translator. So you can call that number 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., seven days a week with your questions as well, too. So um, please do if you don't have any questions or answered. I think we have about 15 minutes left. I want to turn it to our audience, too, if they have any questions. So I'm going to scroll down. Um, but before we do that, um, briefly, uh, today, Bo, you, um, there was two big announcements. One in Minnesota, we just, uh, our governor just announced that it's a, uh, is it stay, stay in shelter um, order, stay right? Home. Stay, stay at home. home. Stay at home. Stay at home. Stay, yeah, <laughs> stay at home. And then there's also, and so if you can explain maybe to our families, what does it mean, right? Um, and also, um, there's the stimulus package passed in the nation's capital at Congress signed by the president about this, this stimulus package that's going to help families and businesses. So if you can summarize yeah. about that. Um, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know, the governor has since, uh, since the state of uh, peacetime emergency was declared on March 13th, Jay Lupe Lindu Vantico Pe, Jay Petu Governor Nyoho, Minnesota. New, uh, new coup, uh, declare peacetime emergency, not to yell at their new, uh, new, uh, new, uh, 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 power got a little more, uh, more sia, more see what though, uh, 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 see it, see, though, got shy chat here, got a little battle, uh, lama pissing, young, young, don't act so, uh, new declare that you since now you need to pass each your executive order, and then thou, you cannot, um, yin ya lop, uh, da jake and the go, la ya be new, uh, new past way high executive order, go, go, jake and the, uh, chita linda, uh, lano, um, uh, Martin, the talk, Loyavi, no, uh, go, Hajitalino, um, Yaha, the Lentu, Hapong Holu, V, uh, Lee, V, Duman, or La Mua, Kepat, or La Mota, unemployment, V, Le Pong, Le Zaholu, so more the policy, none on doubt here, uh, Chitanin, the, uh, local pass, Ekop, uh, Eka executive order, or Yala Pat, or your small business, my Tosuta, La Pass, my Yata business, Ying, had this. เอ่อมองคณะดีมาสมอสมอเตียยาเนี่ยไม่ไม่ได้ขอแพ็กเกจนะตึ๊บปาจิตเตียยาเลยจะครับพาสไว้ขอเชียร์ตัวเจ้า
Ya hadi kaç necessary worker na ya ti ya ya ku commodity ya neng wa ho lu ta la ha la ya ti ta grocery store ti na ti ya ya wa neng ene wa ho lu e pa ka wa you know te ya u ya na work to pay ka pe nya to je pe te ji mo ke sa ke zo nye na ti ya na ma le te li ta ta shan do su ha ji li na ti nye yo chu nya nye ti ho je e chu ya bu ta mo shan do to wa ka mo ke mo e ka mo ti ya ke pa to ka la ya hai te ka mo yu a jau mo na la ya hai te ka mo pa i tu neng e nu mo mo su na ha ji li te la ji bu ta shan do te ya ji bu shi shau na te ka na ya i ka wa wa li wa auto doctor te hai la ya ya wa lu shi ha shi da cha cha heng vi hai te ya pe tu pa le lu te te hai te ya ya te to la ji u wa wa nu na เพิ่งมาเช่าเกจเจอก็ให้เจอก็อ่าอ่าช่างมูนั่นล่ะเชื่อเพิ่งมูเจชิกีให้แห่งนั้นเจไปที่ปอร์ตเรียลีอ่า
So I know my, um, I think this, this stimulus plan, uh, it's, uh, it's still very new that she, I think as, as, as the details come out, um, you know, you walk a whole, you know, American partnership, local. We will. Uh, sure. <laughs> okay. So I want, yeah. we will analyze it and share more information so that all of you know exactly uh, how it impacts the Hmong American community. Okay, I appreciate that. Now, I just want to share also that, again, this is, uh, for those who are joining us, this is a community conversation about COVID-19 and its impact in the Hmong American communities across the country. Now, like Bo said, Yenanyang, Wisconsin or California, it's important to pay attention to the orders uh, issued by your governor or your state government, because for each state, it's different. Huh? Um, right before we got on, Senator phone call and said, Tunza, can you tell our Hmong family, family now because they bring their kids, right? Mm -hmm. And so then they puts their children at risk. So you um especially because uh you know it's a it jeopardize And also I want to shout out um getting back to um in terms of the incidents of hate crimes and incidents, race, race, racist incidents, um, I got contacted by Ruben this morning on NPR. There was an article, a story on, on um, incidents just in Minnesota. Ruben Rosario at Pioneer Press is also doing a story, so he's looking to talk to people. So yeah, like both said earlier, if you feel you have been a victim of um, a hate crime, uh, racist harassment. Um, report it and please contact Ruben Rosario. It's R Rosario at pioneerpress.com and uh, he'd love to share with you. His comment, his contact is also in the comment section. Um, let's, Christian, I think at this point, if you and yeah. I look at- I have some questions ready. Um, so the very first question would be, I think we talked about this earlier. Um, where can elders get access to the information that we shared today? Um, who are some people that you guys or some news outlets that you guys trust that elders can go to. We can't just trust everything that's on social media nowadays. So who are, where are some outlets that elders can get information um, that they can trust? And that, that, is, that is factual. So first thing I want to say is uh, there's so number of information, either medical information and two are non-medical information. So for if for medical information, you have a question, be lucky, be a Minnesota, be more than Mong Dark, which is younger, okay? And so the large ball, we got the big to more the young to shut the ball with your doctor Mong Yahorata. And your name will question the day, saw your share at you who the doctor Mong the Lama Pietza had the to come out in game, your Jolita, your mother symptom, your body, your and Nitia. And but so that's the resources for on the medical perspective. And then there's the non-medical perspective. There's people like Bo and all uh, same thing. Are uh, we're so lucky in Minnesota, been with that representative state rep, yeah, uh, city council, yeah, uh, state senator, the Jungana, you know. So we have a lot of resources, been more half, been more, you know, a bit of you sing, a bit of Jungka. So there's so many people that that uh, can provide information. So make sure that she buy, make sure she know the um and just all the knowledge that you know, the large volume of the knowledge, you know, please try to help with that. I can more, you know, you know, educate and cater you to the the old folks and the, the community members that are involved here. Cool. Um, second would be where can Hmong families get resources? We see there's different food shelves out here. Um. Where can Hmong family get resources? I know, you know, Bo and her organization, that's going to be a great place for people to get more information about just what's going on. But where, where are some places Hmong families can get resources? Let's say they're unemployed uh, because of this. Let's say they are, don't have enough food. Where can they get resources for uh, this type of thing that's going on? Yeah, I would say, you know, um, you can, you're welcome to call us. We can always help triage and tell you where to go um, because there's a, uh, 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 Dr. David said there's medical and non-medical, but then even within each, um, you know, in the non-medical, there's so, so many uh, attempts to help the community right now. So I think 
just being clear about what you need help on. Is it on employment insurance? Is it information on schools? There's all of those things. And so um, there's a long list of kind of places to help. And the state agencies are a great place right now because they're, they're, um, they're, the, um, they're the agencies that are also being funneled through, right? So um, I want to encourage folks to also visit the governor's site, which is um, uh, uh, mn.gov backslash governor backslash COVID-19. Um, and on that page, um, you can see the programs that are about unemployment, about schools, and about human service programs, which are like child care, elderly care, all of those benefits, um, and um, and then housing questions. And yeah, the link to South Jaina, I want to say that the governor also um, passed an executive order that prevents eviction at this time. Um, because again, we know that they are low-income families, they might be losing jobs. So landlords, so uh, know that you are protected um, and you are not to be evicted because you know, um, uh, the executive order prevents that, right? So, um, but there, there is lots of help and then there are definitely food shelters. Um, we know uh, CAPI in Minneapolis offers um, uh, food, um, food that is specific um, uh, to our Asian community too, right? You want rice or you want other things. Um, there, there are uh, lots of um, uh, attempts right now. Everybody is working really hard together to support the community and especially those who are least able um, or might not have the means uh, right now, so. Gotcha. I, will, I will say I'll add if you're a small business there there are disaster loans um, yeah. that are out there so make sure to check out small business administration or SBA uh, Minnesota is approved yeah. for disaster yeah. loans, so you can definitely yeah. check it out I would say also um, if you have student loans you can't pay them right now there is an emergency forbearance so if you you can you don't even have to talk to anybody there's a hotline where you can call in and it's just an automated process for you to have an emergency forbearance there's also no student loan interest um, on uh, for the next 60 days at least. And that's yeah. on federal loans. Yeah. So. And Christian, just to add to that, um, I know some people are worried about their taxes. So the they did for small businesses um, move that deadline to pay taxes, but also um, for those who might have not filed their taxes like me yet, uh, that deadline has been moved to July 15th. Um, yep. So that is to provide some relief for you. But I, I also want to say that um, St. Paul uh, today just announced funds to help um, those who are needy. <laughs> to families and 7,500 to small businesses. So if you live in St. Paul, make sure that you learn about that fund so that um, you can get access to it if you, um, it's called the St. Paul Bridge Fund. And so it is to provide support, direct a cash support to families who need the most and then to small businesses who are in St. Paul, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we have time for one more question from one of the uh, viewers. Um, let's see. I don't think there's too much more. I do have another question. I think we talked about like um, just the xenophobia, racism going on. Mm -hmm. I think we as Asian Americans have really grown over the past couple of years, especially with like in, in mainstream media and just in general of getting past just the modern minority myth. What do you guys, and then now this has happened with, you know, everything that's going on. What do you guys see? Uh, how do you guys see us being perceived after this? And what do you think? Uh, will help us be able to get back to that place that we were at before all of this happening. Yeah. Well, well I, I think that um, I, I think it's uh, you know we've we've experienced uh, things like this before. It's not new. I think going forward, I think that um, what will determine our future is how we respond to you know the um, you know, the hateful acts that are, you know, perpetrated against us because of this. So I would, you know, I'm glad that there are, you know, 
local leaders who are listening uh, to this issue, uh, their ears are open. I, I'm glad that there are ways for us to, to document, to report. And so I think it's important for us going forward you know, to think about how each of us should respond to this. And I know different people, depending on their experience, will respond differently. But I would hope that we respond in a positive way. I just also want to add that um, I know racism exists. I know discrimination exists. But remember that we are doing this uh, uh, tragedy together, and we we will we will rise together as a. Uh, uh, you know, as, as people, the COVID-19 doesn't discriminate. And so I, I hope that we uh, are patient and bitter, discriminate against uh, other people as well. So I, I, even though this happens to us, you know, not everybody are racist, not everybody are mean, not every black person or uh, Mikada are, are like this. And mm -hmm. so we, we have to believe in humanity. We have to believe in the good of other people as well. So we will do this together. It's only a few that's going to ruin it, but but that, that we can't let them ruin, uh, you know, what humanity is. This is a uh, question. I think we're getting to, to the end of our hour here. Was unknown for two or three guests uh, and to Christian too, in a short sentence. Um, you know, in this time of uncertainty, right? Um, what gives you guys hope? Because I don't want this to be uh, just a. a, a uh, panel talking about all the horrible things that's going on, but I I'd like to end on a hopeful note. Um, we'll, there'll be more more discussions uh, in the future about other topics, but briefly in a sentence or two, what gives you hope? Well, I'll start with myself. Well, ho hope for me is is a young generation, my mm -hmm. children. That's that's what's hope. That's why we're doing this. That's why I work so hard. That's why I care. That's why I want to prevent this disease, this illness, this virus from terminating it. That's why I want to defeat and be this because I care about my children. I want them to be to live in a world where racism doesn't exist, right? I want them to be in a world where we all live together, you know, as as a community, not just Hmong people. So that's that's what hope for me is so that I can make this planet a better planet for the next generation so that we can survive this. There's going to be another tragedy coming. There's going to be another illness, but but now we learn a lesson. We together, as a as a humanity, as as you know, as a um, community, will come together and, and fight all this. And so, the young generation, the children, are the future. They're my hope. Dr. Lo, so my hope and Kutsukyet Yeshia is for the try and true prevention that we have that can help us. So get the Thai or your Papa should the Thai they to come only now. These are not, you know, words that are, these are not empty words. These are try and true methods. So that's one. The second is that uh, So that's where I would place my hope. Christian. Yeah, I mean, I would agree with both Dr. Lowe and Dr. Tao, but I think the biggest thing for me is just being able to see how quickly everybody is just being able to come together to form one mission to be able to defeat this. You know, I think us being able to jump on this call so quickly, just on a last minute notice is huge to be able to get it out to, you know, 200 plus people that are watching this. So that really gives me hope and gives me hope that we'll all be able to come together and defeat this thing as we always have as humans, so. All right, thank you. Ms. Yeah. Ms. Yeah. Ms. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, you know, what gives me hope is that uh, our communities have been through many tragedies before and we have always been resilient and so we know how to be apart, right? We can send videos to each other uh, in this time and also that we live in a and so it gives me a lot of hope that um, all of us have voice and we should use it to be able to sh uh, craft solutions and not just be overwhelmed by the problem, but to do the small things in our neighborhood and our families um, and uh, to really support each other through this time. So 
I really appreciate that um, I see that happening and I see the volunteerism, I see the uh, you know, generosity. And if we can just remind ourselves that our people come from long lines of uh, resilient um, leaders, um, also family members, and that we know how to keep each other safe. So uh, I trust in science and I trust in the medical professionals who are looking for solutions. And so I am uh, get over this as well. Thank you. Um, I want to thank I'll all you too, Joe. You can end it. <laughs> yeah. So I want to thank all our distinguished panel. Again, we're just five voices in our community. There's uh, hundreds and thousands more professionals with expertise in education, in policy, in healthcare, in science. I think that can shed some light. Um, this is, uh, I want to share with our viewers, this is the beginning of a community conversation that's going to continue. We have not even talked about how um, some issues, like for example, the census is out. We have not even touched on the issue of deportation, which is still very relevant. Uh, this COVID doesn't make deportation issues go away. Uh, we have an election coming up we haven't talked about. We have some more candidates running. We haven't talked about, um, I would like to bring, I, I'm hopeful because I know that Christian, uh, the four of us are, the. Um, little older than you. So you're with the millennials and I appreciate you coming to kind of um, help be that bridge uh, with this new generation and using social media to connect with them. I'm hoping that in the future, we have uh, entire families sitting and listening together in Monglish and having them, the young people translate to the elders and the elders translating to the, the younger generation. Um, I'm hopeful that in this chaos, in this transition, I think to a new way of life, because our traditional um, funerals are three days long, right? And our sometimes big mu hai chong hai 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 chong, it's two three days, eight hours, a lot of drinking, sitting down, a lot of touching. How this um, pandemic is going to change our way of life, and so, like we talked about earlier, how can we continue to practice be kali ke kai wo chong wo ko but do it and adapt in a way where we can also um, minimize our risk of some of these health viruses and um, adapt and still keep the best of our culture. And I think the conversation starts with us. Um, I would like to have some elderly um, who are expertise, they want to invite them to the table because traditionally when something like this happens, we come together physically and we sit and we hash out all, all the issues, but we're not able to do that. So Christian, we're gonna need you and your, your colleagues to help us bring, use technology and bring the wisdom of our elders to come and say, how can we move forward and keep, keep some, um, some of these traditions alive? For, for example, I had a buddy who came into town this past weekend to, to, um, for a funeral for a new through sister-in-law. They canceled it on Friday. So a lot of money went down the drain because they spent money on food. And so now the, their, their entire family is in limbo. They don't know when the next opening up is going to be up. They don't know. So these are real conversations that need to be had. And so I think this is the start. Um, we haven't even touched on now. Our children are already behind in the schools. Uh, a lot of our uh, Hmong and refugee immigrant children in terms of test scores and performance. Now that they have to learn from home, we don't do we have the resources and the, uh, the help to make sure that they don't fall back even further behind. So we're gonna talk to uh, Hmong administrators and Hmong in the charter schools and teachers on how we can best support our children as they're learning um, moving forward uh, in the next few months here. Um, so these are great conversations. And I, you know, when I think about this, um, I'm reminded of, you know, all the stories that we heard, right? And I'll share, I'll, I'll end with this story. Um, a little post I put on Facebook that, you know, this isn't new for our community. Our parents went through traumatic experiences like this, but they had to carry babies on their backs, carry babies in their arms, leave everything behind at a minute's notice. They had to run from war. They were literally running for their lives, right? And they didn't have any supplies. They didn't go to the store and hoard, like, you know, all the toilet paper and the rice. And they carry makeshift weapons to protect themselves along the way. And they had to travel for weeks, months over dangerous terrain. They had to maneuver 
landmines and bombs dropped from the sky and a communist soldier is on their tail. And they made it. And here we are, we're being asked, Nyoche, stay home, um, wash your hands, don't, you know, go out. And so I think if, like you said, Bo, if there's one thing we can learn from our parents' generation, it's resilience and that we've been survivors and we're fighters. So we will come together. I think we will come out ahead. And so um, let's keep the hope. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Bo Tao from Cal, Dr. Lowe, Dr. David, uh, Christian, all your expertise. Um, I'll see you guys on Friday, eight o'clock when we have our new guests and then we'll be uh, talking about some other um, topics as well. So thank you for all those who are listening. Um, we will publish this and share it so that for those of you who missed it, uh, you're able to go back and uh, play it and, and share it with your family. So thanks a lot, everyone. Good night, be well, be safe. I love you all together. Good night. Good night. All right. God bless.